Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem minimum score of a path between two cities. So this is a pretty long description. I'll go through it quickly. We're given n nodes in a graph numbered one to n. We're also given a list of roads, aka edges connecting these two graphs. These are bi-directional edges, so they go both ways. And each edge has a distance. So you can see an example graph down here. This is the part where it gets kind of confusing, but basically we have a path. We're specifically looking for a path between one and N, and we're guaranteed that a path will exist. So in this case, one is our starting point, let's say, and N is gonna be four because we have four nodes. So we're looking for a path between one to N. That's simple enough, but we're looking for a particular path First of all, the score of a path is defined as the minimum distance of a road in the path. So for example, if this was our path from one to four, these two edges, the score of that path is defined as the minimum edge weight. So of these two edges, five and nine, which one of them is minimal? Five. So that's going to be the score in this case. And we are actually free to create any possible path. And they pretty much tell us literally any possible path from one to end. Like we could have this direct path. We could go like this. We could even go down to three and then back up and then over to four. We can literally do anything we want. And our goal here is to minimize the score of the path. So basically we're guaranteed a path from one to four exists and we want to create the path where we visit the minimal edge or the minimal weight of the road. And I know we can visit the same node multiple times because that's pretty much what they tell us over here. You can visit cities one and n multiple times. It's a little bit ambiguous. They don't clarify if we can visit like other nodes multiple times. Can we visit this node multiple times? It's a bit ambiguous. But the answer is yes in this case. And once you kind of know that, we're basically at that point looking for the minimal edge in this connected component because we know for sure it's going to be a connected component because we know one and n are going to be connected to each other. So at this point, you realize the problem is simpler than they kind of led you to believe. And we can basically use any algorithm we want to find the minimal weight in the connected component. We can use DFS, we can use BFS, we can even use a union find or the disjoint set algorithm. I think of these three, the simplest for me to code up is DFS. It's the most common, so it's usually the one I have the most muscle memory in, but you can of course do the one that you prefer. I believe all of these algorithms will run in O of N time where N is the size of the graph, I guess to put it more precisely, E plus V, the number of vertices plus the number of edges because we're just gonna start at the source one and basically visit every single edge and we're not gonna wanna visit the same node multiple times so we can have a hash set where we keep track of the visited nodes and the memory complexity from that is gonna be big O of N, where N is the number of vertices. I guess I could have used V over here. But knowing that, we can now code it up. Okay, so the first thing, we're given our list of edges, but we want to create an adjacency list. So I'm gonna create a hash map, AKA a default dict, where the value is gonna be by default a list. What we're gonna do here is map every single node to its list of neighbors, but we don't just want the neighbor itself, so we're actually gonna have a pair. The first value is gonna be the neighbor and the second is gonna be the distance because we know each edge has a distance and that's gonna be very important for this problem. But then building the adjacency list is pretty simple. There are three values for each value in roads. So we're gonna extract all three of them here. And then with our adjacency list, we're gonna say, okay, for source, we're going to append to it the pair. One is gonna be the neighbor, which is the destination. And the second is gonna be the distance, just like we kind of defined over here. Then I'm gonna copy and paste this and then do the opposite because we know each edge is bi-directional. So we're gonna say destination maps to the source as well. 
That's simple enough. Now we're going to get into our DFS. Before I define all of it, I'm going to show you how we're actually going to use it. And then we can just fill this in at the end because it's pretty cookie cutter. It's a pretty standard DFS. We know we're trying to minimize the result. Initially, we're gonna set the result to infinity because we're trying to minimize it. And we know we're gonna need a visit hash set for our DFS algorithm. So I'm just gonna declare that out here. And we know when we call DFS, we're gonna call it probably on one. I guess we could also call it on N. N is a parameter. It doesn't really matter where we start because we know there's a path between these two anyway. And after our DFS is called, we're gonna assume that within the DFS, we're gonna be updating our result variable. And then after that, we can just go ahead and return the result. So that's pretty much all of the code. Now, just to fill in the DFS, this isn't really the hard part. What's gonna be the base case of DFS? Well, we don't wanna visit the same node multiple times. So if I is in visit already, we've already visited it, then just return. We don't really need to return anything because that's not really the purpose of our DFS here. Our DFS is just going to update the result. Speaking of which, before we do that, let's actually go ahead and add I to the visit set because we know it wasn't already visited, but now it clearly is. So we should mark that. And then for every neighbor of I, how do we get the neighbors? Well, that's why we created the adjacency list up above. So we're gonna say for every neighbor and also the distance of that neighbor because the adjacency list has a pair. We're going to get that by just going adjacency list and using I as the key. So getting the neighbor and the distance, first of all, maybe this distance is the minimal distance. So we're going to set result equal to the minimum of itself and the distance that we just computed. But result is a variable to reassign a variable that's not declared within this function. We have to declare it non-local. So that's what I'm gonna do here. The reason we can say visit.add without declaring it non-local in Python is because it's an object and we're literally just calling a method on that object. We're not reassigning it. If we were to do this, visit equals something something, then we would not be allowed to do that. We would get an error. So that's the clarification, but this is Python specific. You should be able to code it up pretty similarly in other languages. But last thing before I forget, after updating our result, we also wanna actually call that recursive DFS on each neighbor. And I believe that is the entire code. Let's run it to confirm. And as you can see, it works and it's pretty efficient. If this was helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. It has a ton of free resources to help you prepare. Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon.